It is, of course, Friday. It's Free Speech Friday's time. And uh, we wrap up the week with a couple of people who aren't afraid, aren't afraid to speak their mind. Can I also say just thank you guys getting a lot of positive feedback to exposing Michael the Juggler as a juggler of more things than just other balls. Uh, Michael used to juggle his own balls and his own rod in public, which made him a bit of a public nuisance. So he is uh, RIP Michael, one of the victims of Loafer's Lodge fire being buried today. But a number of people saying thank you for speaking the truth about Michael rather than the woke, politically correct version about Michael. Um, boy, that Loafer's Lodge uh, fire, a really sad thing. All right, on the Free Speech Friday panel today, uh, the host with the most in Auckland, uh, Lee, publican Leo Malloy. Leo, how are you, my friend? Very well, Sean. Good morning to all. All right. Um, hey, I, and also joining us, and we do have him here. And can you put him to air or do I put him to air? You put him to air. Um, we have um, the New Zealand First candidate, Shane Jones uh, from uh, Northland. Uh, Shane, how are you, mate? Good? Uh, yeah, but I'm not airy, OK? All right. All right. Look, the two of you first, let's, I just want to kick off because we've been talking about it a lot this morning. Uh, the latest poll shows or confirms the trend from centre-left to centre-right. I don't want to just yet get into New Zealand First particular polling, but I've made the point today, guys, that our current crop of political journalists seem to have forgotten that if you are the incumbent Prime Minister, you rate disproportionately high compared with what happens on Election Day. 9 to 12% higher simply because of name recognition. So, Shane, all these people kicking Luxon aren't really being fair because Hipkins is actually, if you factor in the incumbency bump, he's rating lower than Luxon in preferred Prime Minister. Look, uh, Chippy had his uh, wee geyser experience spurted ahead at the beginning of the year. Mm. And I've said all along, once we get into the winter, and once people really feel the bite of the cost of living and other dramas of running a household, Chippy's uh, high tide mark will ebb significantly. And that's what you're seeing. Yeah, yeah. All right, Leo, do you think the honeymoon's over for Chippy? Oh, the honeymoon's well over for, for, that, for, for the, that whole coalition. I mean, yeah. the wheels fell off some time ago. Uh, as you know, I'm fairly cynical about most polls. Um, I had a good look at what yesterday's one, and I think it's indicative of where, where it's I It's a trend, isn't it? I think it's part of a trend. It's a trend, but I, yeah, uh, and I think it's, there's ample evidence historically to say that those polls are only a very small window, depending on who conducted them and who was mm. the pool they were fishing from. But, but the, um, the National um, New Zealand First Act Coalition will roll, it'll be a landslide, it'll be a tsunami, and I don't want to discuss the reasons here in public, so I don't want to help Labour in any possible way, shape or form, but, and I'm new to politics, I'm not Jonesy, but the reality is, what you see there is not what's going to happen on election day, this is going to be big, and, and yeah. my God, the country needs it, we're, we're in terrible, terrible um, trouble, yeah. this country. Yeah, looking at the Greens, that was, I mean, that was bigger than the margin of error, uh, they have taken a thumping why do we think that was, guys? And a couple of was it was it Elizabeth uh, Kerry Kerry? Was it actually Marama Davidson and the mystery motorcycle and cis white males uh, responsible for all violence? But seven percent—that's pretty dire for the Green Shane. You there? Yep. Yep. Well, I've already had this discussion before. The Green Party actually represent everything that's causing us to go further down the gurgler. I've said on numerous occasions, we've got many economic opportunities in New Zealand, but people are giving up before they even write, pull out their checkbook because the, prob the, the, the process is so riddled with all this green tape. And every time the Green Party make a public contribution, it's got nothing to do with enhancing environmental outcomes. It's got everything to do with social engineering. They've manipulated the treaty. They've ruined the whole uh, social environment around gender. I've got zero tolerance for them, and I think I doubt they're even going to get back into Parliament unless um, young Chloe wins that Auckland seat. Yeah, and Leo, that's bang where you are. That's bang where your your bar is. Is is Auckland Central? 
Are you surprised how poorly the Greenies have done or are people down in your neck of the woods still all lovely, loved up with Chloe? No, no, I think there's a degree of respect for Chloe and she's, she pushes a barrow and she capitalises on opportunities like extreme weather events to make out that she's the, the panacea, the cure for all these issues that we're having to endure up here in the CBD. But that said, I think you, you touched on it when you mentioned Elizabeth Kerry Kerry and Marama Davison in particular. I mean, that was pretty average behaviour and I don't know why she hasn't come back and retracted or apologised for that but there's two or three other nut cases in that party too there's um, that Ricardo Mendes March, I mean they're just some of the, they trade in the, in the currency the politics of envy and jealousy and they have communist style policies, New Zealand has no appetite for that sort of rubbish, we're a hard working country this country built on endeavour and effort and reward uh, sort of the good things you do for productivity and they're trying to undermine all that, it's just, it's ridiculous I don't know where they I think their support base exists, but clearly it's evaporating quickly. Yeah. Guys, I want to move on from the poll to a story we have been really pushing this week. Uh, and, and a story that was dumped by the Herald on Budget Day. An investigative piece by Matt Nippet, and there's no reason you publish a story like that on Budget Day except to get it buried. Um, and this is about the Waipareira Trust... It's loans to John Tamahiri, who then used those loans of hundreds of thousands of dollars, interest-free loans, from the trust he manages or is chair of, the Charitable Trust. He takes that money and he spends it on his own mayoral campaign and on the Māori Party, which is a breach of the Charitable Trust status of the Waipareira Trust. Now, he is caught doing that. He admits it, and the Charities Commission refuses to deregister the Waipareira Trust and seems to say, oh, would you mind paying the money back? Um, Shane, I know New Zealand First is hardly one to talk about dotting the I's and crossing all the T's in terms of party finances, but this sounds incredibly dodgy, doesn't it? Well, sadly, we've suffered the depredations of the SFO, but there'll be more... Uh, well, I'm not talking more, SFO but... here, it's Charities Commission. Yeah, no, 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 no. So you're talking to someone who understands when an organisation, like a, a statutory authority, set their sights on you. Mm. So we uh, we didn't get uh, we didn't get the wet uh, bus ticket treatment, although we won um, in terms of court cases <coughs> or the the organisation um, yeah. that faced the music. But look, on the question of why why Pareda uh, haven't been taken to the cleaners. I, I, although I'm not across the, uh, the, the details, I would say this. The White Parade Trust, over the years, has done a tremendous amount of good work out in West Auckland. And um, it's a moot question, how will they enforce upon John that he has to pay that three or 400 payback? Is it a, 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 do they have a court order against him? Have they got a court after him? How is it going to work? I'm not sure well, that's that. what's not clear, and the Charities Commissioner doesn't want to make it clear. The funny thing is that, of course, New Zealand First was deregistered as a charity for having the temerity to want to comment on the smacking debate but because it was a political activity. But here we have the Waipareira Trust de facto basically bankrolling the Māori Party and it's allowed to stay as a charity. Well, at the next election, the major parties will have two options. If you want a vision for New Zealand that <clears throat> is chronically wrong, you'll go with the Māori Party. If you want an integrated, unified vision for New Zealand, you'll back Winston and Shane Jones. <laughs> um, and look, you, part, you guys are very much players in terms of Māori voters, but you have to be, of course, to vote New Zealand first, you would need to be not on the Māori roll, correct, Shane? No, New Zealand first attracts quite a lot of support in terms of party vote within the Māori seats. The ah, seat of I see. Taitokero, yep. The seat of Taitokero delivered several thousand votes. Uh, I don't exclusively claim credit for that, but I'm sure I did contribute in some manner or form. OK, so you guys will be campaigning for the Māori party vote. And that can So we're going be... to campaign... Yeah, and, and like, obviously, the, uh, we're, a, we're a party vote entity, but we're going to have a crack at the seat of Northland, but any Kiwi who is up for supporting Winston and I, you know what you're going to get. You're not going to get any more polarisation. You're not going to get any yeah. more stigmatisation. And you're going to get someone who's going to take a, an axe to the gangs. Yeah. Also, Shane, uh, a lot of people today in particular actually texting me and asking the question, 
Will Winston, will New Zealand First go with Labour? Yeah, I think there's a bit of a machine out there that continually uh, pump out that trope. Winston has already uh, stated that he won't be backing this crowd, uh, the Labour crowd. But our main uh, task, quite frankly, is to put the party back on the parliamentary landscape. Right. And we're That's probably the only single two, yeah, the single two politicians in New Zealand that are willing to take on these hard issues. All right. Leo, Waipareira Trust, backing the Maori well, Party. You know John Tamahiri. Come on, this is dodgy as mate. hell. Uh, he's a good mate, and I love him like a brother. But I can say that he has a unique ability to find a vein of gold if there's one anywhere. He's got the umbilical cord working full time with government. Um, that said, I absolutely totally agree with what Shane said about Waipuru Trust. They do great work, and I mean great work. That uh, doesn't the vaccination. mean they're allowed to break the law, Leo. Well, they have appropriate authorities to investigate that sort of thing, and it would appear to me that he's been largely, um, it's been sort of not of the head, OK, well, you might have transgressed, but let's find a remedy. So I'm going to park it there and say if they're going to find a remedy, whatever the remedy may be, I'm not going to... I have no I faith either. they'll buy the remedy. I think they're being given way more um, understanding and love, maybe because they're a Māori trust, than Family First were. You ca cannot change the fact, though, that that Waipura Trust does great work. And I'm yeah, yeah but that doesn't mean... You know, I could be the loveliest guy and still break the speed limit. I'm a good guy, don't give me a speeding ticket. It doesn't work like that, Leo, unless you live in a corrupt country. And the agency, the appropriate agency, has reviewed the matter, and it would appear it's parked it. Look, Jeez, I'm a you're a worry. Sort of a you dude, are a worry, I'm, I'm mate. A, I'm a second chance dude. I don't, I'm not entirely happy about this media guy who's been given two years, nine months for being a money launderer up here too, because I've seen him do three years of remedial work. At some stage, you have to balance up. You know, the good people do with their transgression. And in this instance here, I'm saying that the good work Wiper Trust does more than balances any alleged transgression. All right, you and Shane seem to be on the same same thing there. He, he gets away with it. He gets a free pass. Interesting. Uh, we're going to have a quick break, guys. Uh, let's play. Let's play one of our advertisements, Benny. The nearest member of, if you like, the commercial family is a business that helps people sell their business. It's called Barker Business Brokerage. We're joined from uh, Barker Business Brokerage this morning by Michelle Berg. Michelle, welcome to the platform. Welcome on board. Good morning, Sean. So you guys literally help businesses sell themselves? Well, there's a lot involved in selling a business. It's a very compliance-heavy process. There's a lot of regulations involved, and we take care of all of that. And at the same time, we get under the hood of businesses whose owners want to sell them, and we help them through that process. Do you help them find the people who might want to buy them? Yeah, there's a lot of people looking to diversify their portfolios. And often when you buy a business, you can get better than a 20 or 30 percent return so people who maybe once upon a time were quite heavy in terms of property investment are saying i think i might put a bit of business activity in there because it's going to give me a better return than what i'm getting out of the rest of my portfolio even if you've got money in fixed funds you've convinced me on my brokerage why barkers they just look after everything for us. The compliance, the office staff are fantastic, the account staff, the support staff, and all the support is there. So I can do what I do best, which is getting in touch with people, helping them through this sale process, looking after them, and Barkers just take care of everything else. So if you want to sell your business or you're looking to buy a business, how do you get hold of Barkers? Barkerbusiness.co.nz is our website. It sounds to me like you are really running a brokerage that is absolutely tailor-made to the needs of the vendors that come to you. Exactly. Thank you so much for your time this morning. A pleasure. Thank you. Michelle Bogue from BarkerBusiness.co.nz We've learned how appallingly prickly and intolerant society has become of even the mildest adverse comment. What you have to say counts on the platform. Freedom. Freedom. All right, it is Free Speech Friday. With us is Leo Malloy, publican from Auckland, and Shane Jones. New Zealand First Party candidate uh, for Northland. Guys, um, quite some reaction to your 
Oh, John's a good guy. Uh, let's let him break the uh, Charities Trust laws. Um, someone has written here, Pablo Escobar had a free zoo, gave food to his community and funded a football team. Good guy. He did good work. Um, uh, <laughs> I can't believe um, both these guys said how good the Trust is. Wow. Get off, uh, Leo. Um, <laughs> so I'm sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> Maybe your personal knowledge of Mr. Tamahiri has created an inherent bias that other New Zealanders do not share when they look at this issue, or at least other platform listeners. Now, guys, I want to get into um, something I know, Leo, you're interested in. I'm not sure about you, Shane. The TAB and these changes that McNulty announced to the TAB, we are selling the kind of operational management of the TAB to this outfit from Britain called Entain, which I also understand owns Ladbrokes. What difference, Leo, will this have in terms of betting in New Zealand or horse racing, which I know you're interested in, and the TAB? Well, it'll have a fantastic short-term sugar rush but there's potentially some significant fish hooks involved. The first one, obviously, is denying residents of New Zealand the right to bet with other agencies anywhere else, which means you have a monopoly, which means you get gouging, yeah. and that the margins of, say, 17% takeout from tote pools will be it's almost certainly increased to meet the $150 million a year. But the real elephant in the room that no one has talked about or wants to talk about or has gone straight through to the keeper and hasn't been noticed, which would be no surprise with McAnulty, I don't think he's got the necessary experience to scrutinise legislation like this because he's only a TAB bookie after all himself. So, um, yeah. But the real problem is there's 500 pokies that Helen Clark's government wrote a law where the, uh, the entire proceeds of those pokies went to the TAB. And one group of 18 pokies in the Alexander Park Racing Club, the big harness club here in town in Epsom, they net 2.5 to 3 million per year out of Apparently the they're going to go, Leo, what is, is what I've been told. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. The whole 500 are going to go. So if you do the math, if 18 pokies get 2.5 million, they won't all be as good a sites as that. But I'm told it's around 40 to 15 million per annum. And that pays, of course, for the Racing Industry Board, which is a bunch of ex-policemen who are not much use, but they run around victimising people in racing for no good reason. <laughs> but there's 40 million net, 40 to 15 million, that the industry's going to lose. Now, if this is a 25-year deal, which it is, do the math of 40 million per annum, you know, you're talking about a billion dollars in loss over 25 years. So whilst on the one hand you might be getting some sweets, it's a massive trade-off. You're losing, you're losing your, uh, well, it's not a duopoly, it's a probably a polyopoly. You're losing the ability to bid overseas with other agencies. You're losing the sense of competition. You're losing the proceeds of 500 pokies with a sinking bid policy, and you'll never get that back. In 25 years' time, when the intake deal is done and dusted, you won't be able to go back to the government and say, I want those 500 pokies back. So that's a major and that's a very significant negative uh, aspect of this deal. And whilst at first glance it appears to be a super deal for the industry in the short term, I'd be gravely concerned about long term. All right. Uh, Shane, your view? Well, the position's been articulated by Winston. He's horrified that this has happened. The racing industry uh, is in his blood. Uh, and, you know, this is a Labour Party who has just opened up in an unfettered fashion the floodgates of immigration. This is a Labour Party that has just hopped off the TAB for a very short-term fiscal adrenaline rush. I'm this glad you Labor said that, Party. Shane, because it does look like a privatisation of the TAB. But in everything but name. So they, uh, uh, what I'd say, it, it it's beyond privatisation. It's actually... Deception. They're describing it as some sort of infusion up front of capital that they couldn't find elsewhere. But in actual fact, it's outsourcing revenue generation that is actually going to come from Kiwis and it's going to disappear down the gurgler of the London share market. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you, Shane. So, once again... This deal might not stick if, would this be part of a coalition negotiation if you guys were up over 5% and talking with ACT and National? Or, or talking with National, would you be looking at further change to, to this particular policy or deal? Well, the first thing that you've got wrong in your question is you use the word if. We're far <laughs> more emphatic. We're already, we're already over 5%. So yeah. let's, uh, let's clear that vagueness up right now. And secondly, 
once we get down to the point of um, establishing what sort of government, if we have that uh, privilege, then we'll uh, turn our mind to such matters as the TAB. That th- those matters lie with uh, with the Rangatira, the leader, yeah, Winston. Yeah, yeah. Look, it seems to me 150, 140 million dollars is just this nice little warm um, figure uh, around which you can implement policy. Because the other policy worth about that is this partnership or this subsidy to New Zealand Steel. To and, and I, I really tried to pick this apart, guys. So we're going to pay New Zealand Steel or subsidise them to build a new blast furnace that can be run on electricity that recycles steel. And because it's run on electricity, they won't burn so much coal. But the electricity may in fact be generated by power stations burning coal anyway. And an Australian company owns the steel company anyway and they make enough profit to have paid for their own new blast furnace. Is that basically please, the please, deal, please. Leo, as you, you see it? So I want to go first on this, and I'm delighted you've invited me to go first. I, I'm staggered by the hypocrisy, staggered, because Huntley Power Station, 100% powered by Maui gas from the Taranaki fields, local coal, 10 kilometres away is their mine, and 1.5 million tonnes of dirty brown Indonesian coal. 100% powered. Huntley alone is 50% of New Zealand's electricity production emissions. So just carefully, because the people on Twitter never understand that, the production of electricity in itself produces emissions. 50% yep. comes from Huntley. 8%, it's a 1,000 megawatt station, Huntley. That power is going to go straight to Glenbrook. Show, show, me, the, show me the model where that works, where you're taking coal of A, but using coal from B to power A. It's ridiculous. It's just so typical of the flaky politics this government indulges in and they make these bold announcements there's no basis in fact what they could have said is let's put a wee uh, those turbines in the Kuiper Harbour entrance for example that's been uh, well and truly traversed before that's a 250 megawatt opportunity and I think you only need about 50 megawatts for Glenbrook in case you're wondering and they could have said like let's make you know put two good things together here and make like make the world a better place in its own unique micro way by doing this but I oh, know they have to go and use Huntley Power it's just ludicrous it's facile and it shows how shallow this government's thinking is Okay, so obviously you're fairly negative about it, Leo. Shane, it doesn't seem to make sense. It is robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, what the government's actually... The the government's got a deeper problem. Um, They can't work out whether or not they're committed to the ETS. They've got the chap, uh, Rod Carr. Yep. Who is now wandering around with a greenstone pen the size of a square mouth shovel. Yeah, he's like John Uh, the Baptist, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, no, no, he's become a zealot. He, uh, he's not, I don't know if I've actually, I think I've met him, met him once. Mm. But uh, if, there was, if there was one thing that uh, I unwisely agreed to, that was him being the chairman of the, uh, of the Climate Change Commission. And that money that you're talking about uh, going into NZ Steel, that could have gone to upgrading the grid, incentivising more solar power, wind power. It could have gone into cleaning up the, profile of emissions from our energy sector. Now, the fact that uh, they've chosen this particular uh, example as a winner, I dare say, Leo, because the Aussies, a bit like uh, Rio Tinto said, unless you give us what we want, we're going to make all these people unemployed. I presume that the, the government blinked over that sort of threat from the Aussies. Yeah, yeah, it does seem crazy. But it also, I guess, overall, Shane... And, Leo, it looks like a government desperate to do something because they are not just seeing the polls like the one that came out last night. They've got their own internal polling that has to be telling them the tide is going out, Shane. Well, the tide is going out. This is going to be an election, not unlike the people who sat on their vote and never told the truth and all turned out to vote for Trump. People are not. Yeah, uh, openly declaring their level of animus or hostility to Labour. But everywhere you look, whether it's ram raids, whether it's flaky climate change policy, whether it's uh, red tape engulfing businesses, we've got marine businesses up home, aquaculture businesses, people aren't bothering to pull their checkbook out because they're going to spend so much money on consultants and transaction costs. We're going to hollow our economy out and all the good people are going to go to Australia and we're going to be left with these cuckoos these juvenile, blood-sucking vampires who are destroying the North with their ram raids, and that's all Labour's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Leo? On the micro level, it's going to, what you're going to happen at Auckland, you're going to see a reflection of that at, at, at the national level, and we all know what happened at Auckland. Wayne Brown never let a poll. 
If they're so common in every poll, I was second in every poll until I strategically removed myself. Wayne never led a poll. And the other crowd had the endorsement of all the fabulous, allegedly fabulous people like Jacinda Ardern. It did not help. This, this election will be won and lost in Auckland. It'll be won and lost on law and order. And it'll be won and lost on cost of living. And Auckland is a very powerful voting community. And they will all, to a man, swing right. And I know that because of my own polling, my own focus group. And Jonesy knows that too because we've had this discussion. This is where it'll be won. This is the battleground for New Zealand. And it will be a comprehensive victory. All right. Look, the uh, thing I want to end on too, we lost, I think, a great one this week. <laughs> Give me a Tina Turner favourite song, Rank her out of ten in terms of music icon, Leo. Uh, I was into her hair and her legs, but songs are great as well. Um, probably simply the best, I suppose. A bit of a poppy one, but I love that song. So she's a ten out of ten for you. Oh, eleven out of ten. Eleven out human being. Yeah, great example of the species, and you know, great backstory, the, the drama with Ike Turner. Yeah. The solo career, when she got involved in NRL, there's not, nothing bad about Tina Turner. It's just so sad that she died, but a marvellous human being. All right, Shane? Yeah, no, no, 12, 13, 14, 15 out of 10, mate. I was at, uh, I, I went to Aussie when she performed at one of the NRL um, jamborees. Yeah. Energy, power. Yeah. Now, what, uh, I can't think of the full name as a, um, not, not, not nut job, but Flatbush anyway. Flatbush City the, the song that's, not, Yeah, that's uh, it, Nutbush, that's Flatbush it. City Limit. Yeah, good yeah, stuff. Yeah. Guys, I thank you both. back with Ike Day. Yeah, I thank you both. Both, yeah. Both, I just got to say, we played a succession of Tina songs at HQ last night, and everybody was enthralled. We were asked them by numerous people, and we played all those old ones from Tina and Ike right through to Tina's greatest hits. And everybody, to a person, they were just standing there with their jaws hanging open. It was just fabulous. I wondered if you might have done that, Leo. I thank you. Uh, thank you both for joining me this morning. Okay, mate. See you later. Cheers, Shane Jones, Leo Malloy. Our Free Speech Friday uh, players today. A uh, boy, not very popular though. They, they both. Oh, John Tamer here, he's okay. We'll give the Waipareira Trust a free pass. Nah. Let's not give him a free pass. Let's tell the truth. Mind you, I'm a journalist. I'm kind of into that.